Hi, today we are diving into the misery surrounding Tanzania, a country that has been relatively quiet in the news lately, especially since the presidency of the late John Magufuri. Despite the lack of the headlines, there is a compelling story to tell about Tanzania's remarkable economic performance. So let's explore why this country has been flying under the radar. Before we get into the economic aspects, let's briefly touch upon the late President John Magufuli. Known as the bulldozer, he was a charismatic and controversial leader who served from the year 2015 until his untimely passing. His presidency was marked by a strong focus on infrastructure, development, and anti-corruption effort. Since Magufuli's tenure, Tanzania has continued on a path of economic transformation. The country has witnessed substantial improvement in various sectors contributing to its overall economic well-being. The current Tanzania's leadership, led by President Madame Suluhu, has implemented pragmatic economic policies that emphasize sustainability and inclusivity. This has fostered a favorable business environment attracting both domestic and foreign investment. On this one, uh, there are story that even Kenyan investors are leaving Kenya and relocating to Tanzania. And we are talking about manufacturers, some companies that have been doing manufacturing in Kenya for the last 40, even 50 years. Today have opened new factories in Tanzania because of their favorable economic uh, factors. For example, affordable electricity, uh, reduced taxes and levies, and ease of transport in Tanzania. These have moved, uh, pushed these investors to do manufacturing in Tanzania and bring back those products or the final products to the markets in Kenya, Uganda, and Congo. So that is taking place. And don't forget foreign investors, the, the, the foreigners, the Chinese, the Arabs are also investing in Tanzania. The other issue or the other factor should look at infrastructure development. Building upon President Magufuri's legacy, Madam Suluhu, the current president, has continued ongoing investments in infrastructure such as roads, railways, and ports which have facilitated smoother trade and connectivity, positioning Tanzania as a regional economic hub. And the same goes that traders in Uganda, Congo, Rwanda, Burundi, and some parts of Kenya are preferring using the port city of Dar es Salaam to ship in their goods because they are efficient, they are more efficient than before, and they save time. So they are Avoiding the port city of Mombasa, which was the la which is the largest in terms of volume even now, but Dar es Salaam is increasing the volume of cargo that is being cleared there, including parts of Malawi and Zambia using that same port. So it means in few years to come, more than two thirds of goods in East and Central Africa might be cleared through that port. And then don't forget the new modern railway called the SGR, the Standard Gauge Railway that is being constructed in Tanzania to connect Congo, Burundi, Rwanda, Uganda to the port city of Dar es Salaam. The other factor we need to look at are agricultural reforms. Today, you know, Tanzania is the king of agricultural production in Eastern Central Africa. No doubt about that. And agricultural reforms have played a crucial role in Tanzania's economic success with initiatives to boost productivity and support farmers and improve agricultural value chains. This has been done to a point that most of the goods being consumed inside Kenya and in parts of Tanzania, uh, Rwanda, sorry, are coming from Tanzania. Tanzania is feeding Kenya, is feeding Somalia, and they're feeding Zambia, Congo, which is larger than Tanzania, and, you know, Rwanda, with the agricultural produce, because in Tanzania, it's easy to do farming than these other countries. And this has increased food security and food exports in Tanzania. And then diversification, very important. Tanzania has strategically diversified its economy 
from a mining-based economy and agricultural-based economy to include service industry, for example, their tourism sector. Initially, Kenya was leading in tourism in this region, but not until about five years ago, when Tanzania overtook Kenya with a number of uh, tourist arrival, and they have continued growing this number to the current 4 million visitors per year in tourism. And this has increased Tanzania's foreign currency earnings. So that is diversification. This divers diversification has created a resilient economic foundation shielding the country from external shocks. So which is why the, current, the Tanzanian currency has remained stable while other currencies in Africa are struggling against the dollar. And don't forget, another factor is that international media might not be giving Tanzania the spotlight. And that's why I'm doing this video. So global economic trends and partnership has also played a role in the nation's success. For example, if you go to Wikipedia or you go to other sources and you compare this year's projection from the forecast from the IMF, from the World Bank and the United Nations, Tanzania's economy is supposed or they are focusing the forecast is that it will grow the gdp will grow by 84 billion us dollar for the year 2023 compare that with kenya's 112 billion and if you go back to 2021 which is two years ago kenya had a gdp of 110 billion while tanzania had a gdp of 70 billion so within a span of two years or a year tanzania has crossed the gap by 14 billion while kenya has only increased by just two billion which means that tanzania is catching up with kenya they are catching up with ethiopia they are catching up with the rest of africa that is a key indicator for that and finally before i finish this in conclusion, is that Tanzania's silence in the news doesn't reflect a lack of progress. Rather, it highlights the country's focus on sustainable development and economic prosperity, which reminds me of that famous quotation that says, move in silent so that they don't know your next move. And I think that is the mantra Tanzania is using. I'm going to leave you another video from a very important or rather a high-ranking politician from kenya who is also a former national assembly speaker in kenya saying the same things i just highlighted in this video the gdp of tanzania in 2015 was 47 billion and in 2015 our gdp was over 80 billion that's true. We have now stagnated at a between 100 and 110. No, we're at 110.4 billion. Just, just a moment. Tanzania's GDP is projected at 120 billion by 2027, which is only five years down the line. Projection. Projection based on the current, based on the on the on the current trajectory on, on the growth. Yeah. Yeah. 2015, which is only seven years ago, they were at 47. Today they are at 80. And where, where were we? When we, they were at 40? Uh, when they were at 40, we were about 80 something. We're Actually, 80. closer to 90. So now we're still are, within. They are now 64, we are 110. So no, are. no, they are, seven, they are 80, 70, almost 80, 77 something. Right now? Right now. No, they are 64. Just a moment, check Google. it, check right. it, check it, check it. <laughs> if you want, you can Google and find out right now, no, and I'll show you. Let me just show you right now. Uh, let me just show you. You can Google and see how it is. Yeah. What is this? 64.4 billion. 76.58, 2022. That's Tanzania's GDP. 